Well, Florida sport fishing is at a crossroads. One very popular fish is considered to be vulnerable with its population declining. Yeah, tonight at 10, we are making waves with a nonprofit that's using state of the art technology to tag and track one of Florida's most prized possessions. Rooted in Florida's rich history is a traditional hunt. From Bay Area beaches to Boca Grande, the undisputed tarpon capital of the world. For more than 100 years, the hunt for the Silver King, which earns its name on every catch. A challenge and a thrill that attracts anglers from around the world. They're beautiful, they're so powerful. It really is amazing and it's worth conserving. That's why today's hunt is all about preserving this tradition. Anybody have one on? Perfect. Charter fishermen like Captain David Hutcherson graciously share their catches. Uh, 26. With Joellen Wilson and Lucas Griffin of the nonprofit Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Once they hook up, Joellen and Lucas hop on board and carefully insert a tiny tracker in these beasts of the beach to help understand why they may be in decline. Don't worry about Their spawning and habitat preferences and how resistant, if they are at all, to red tide. This one's a male, so we can record that. One of the reasons this is so important is that tarpon take so long to get this big. They're unusually slow to grow. In fact, a fish that big it may take him 20 or 30 years to get that big, whereas other fish can grow at twice the pace. So these fish, you remove one, it's going to take a big hit in the population. And we've known they migrate, but this is even more important now that we share these fish with states that don't offer the same protections Florida does. Last year, scientists were surprised to see a tarpon tagged in the Keys swam a thousand miles away to Ocean City, Maryland. Did we know before that they traveled that far? There's been some reports, but a large reason why we're doing this project is because there's really no information out there about these incredible fish. It slides right down so that way it won't shoot out the top. And this is no bulky satellite transmitter that only lasts a few months. These new trackers are inserted into the fish and emit an ultrasonic ping. Really? That's what you do? A tiny incision right under the tarpon's stomach and it slips right in. And it logs the time and date. Then listening stations like this are placed all around the coast underwater from Apalachicola Bay up to Maryland. Each of these dots, watch, represents an already tagged tarpon recording their every move as they swim by. So it's, it's pretty cutting edge technology that's growing in our, our research world. And the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust collaborate with other researchers with the same devices. So they have access to data from 4,000 of these. And it's not just for tarpon. The whole fishery is tied into one another. They're now tracking snook and redfish in Tampa Bay as well. So we got to really start thinking more of a whole picture of management rather than just sort of just Charlotte Harbor, Tampa Bay, Florida Keys. The more we learn, it's all interconnected. The better, they say, we can protect them. Now here's the difference. Not only can you not kill a tarpon of any size in Florida, but those over 40 inches, you can't even take them out of the water. Contrast that to the states where these fish are migrating to and from Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia and the Carolinas. They do have some limits, but they all allow tarpon still to be killed and there are currently no federal restrictions on tarpon. Ooh, I hope that changes. Maybe one day it will with this kind of research. Now that we know that we're sharing them with so many other states and the population's down, yes. hopefully it leads to better protection. We hope so. Yep. Good story. Well, a new attraction's coming to Orlando. 